As you might have noticed, this episode of Akio TV starts in the shed. And the reason we're in the shed is because today we're testing out a new tool. This homemade welding machine. Now, of course, we're going to do some welding with this machine and we're going to be testing just how good it is. But before we do that, I'd like to take a look at the power supply itself so that we can actually see what it is and how it actually works. So this is what my welding power supply looks like from up close. As you can see, everything is completely exposed. There is no housing whatsoever, which does indeed make this kind of a hazardous device but it also makes it the perfect welding power supply to take a look at and talk about how this kind of stuff actually works, which is exactly what we're going to do right now. So you can see that on this side, we've got a power cable coming into the device over here. And then you can see this wire, which is attached to something that you might recognize. I don't know if you can see it that well right now as a circuit breaker. So I figured when I was building this that in some situation I might draw too much current from the power outlet. And of course when you draw too much current from a power outlet you might pop a breaker. The problem is that other people might be on the same group using other devices and those people are not going to be very happy if I trip the breaker with my stupid welding appliance. So therefore I decided I, I just put my own breaker on the welding machine so that in the event that it draws too much current, it'll just switch itself off. That hasn't happened, by the way. So apparently it doesn't draw too much current because no breaker has tripped so far. So after that, the power goes into this coil on this big transformer, which is what we call the primary coil of the transformer. So you can see that's made of relatively thin wire and has a large amount of turns. So it's a lot of wire right there. And then what that coil does is it generates a magnetic field, an alternating magnetic field, of course. And that magnetic field reaches this secondary coil, which is made of much thicker wire and has way fewer turns. The magnetic field from the primary coil will then induce electricity in the secondary coil, which is what we use to weld. In this case, we have about seven, eight times fewer turns on the secondary. So the voltage that we're getting is about seven to eight times lower than the voltage that goes into it on the primary, which means that we have 230 to 240 volts going into the transformer and we get around 30 to 35 volts out of it. So the voltage that we're going to use to weld is a lot lower. Because we dropped the voltage by seven or eight times, we also increase the maximum current by seven to eight times. And that current is what allows us to create the high temperatures that are required to melt metal. And from there on, it's very simple. The welding current goes through this big cable to the welding electrode, the, uh, the stick that we're using, it's a stick welding setup. And then it returns through this clamp, which you attach to the workpiece, and then returns to this side of the transformer over here. And that's essentially the welding power supply. Okay, so I've actually got a little test piece over here. I've already done some welding. As you can see, it looks rather terrible, uh, but that is not because of this device, but more because of my welding skills. Also, you might have noticed there is a little fan right behind the welder over here. We're not gonna be using that today because we're not gonna do a lot of welding, but I've noticed that when you use this thing for an extended period of time, it does tend to get quite warm. So I've just set up this fan over here so that when I'm gonna weld more stuff, I can just plug these wires in over here, the fan turns on and it gives me a little bit of extra cooling. But for this small test, we won't be needing the fan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this thing in the bench vise, and then we're gonna try and weld this side of the workpiece. So we're going to try and weld these two pieces together on this, uh, on this side over here. All right, so first I'm just going to connect this clamp to the bench vise over here, just like that. Um, then I'm going to take our workpiece over here and just clamp that in place, just like that. Then we plug in the welding power supply, which of course I still have to turn on with this breaker switch over here. 
<laughs> Don't you like the sound of that? Here we go. All right, let's take a look at the result. <laughs> now actually, that is a pretty awful looking weld. So as I mentioned, my welding skills aren't that great. However, as you can see, the welder does work um, and it can actually weld pieces of metal together. Now, let's have another go at this, right? I want a second attempt because this is actually really bad. I can't show this as my, you know, as the final shot on, on the video, right? I can't. So we need to do this again. Um, so here it goes. Attempt number two. Do you know, actually, I'm still not quite happy with that. So, uh, you know, third time's a charm, they say, right? Okay, let's try it again. Well, that still isn't quite as good as I hoped, uh, but at least I demonstrated uh, that the machine works. And I think I've actually got no attempts left because the entire workpiece is now pretty much covered in my awful welding skills. Anyway, that's the homemade welding machine. That's how it works, what it does, what it's capable of. Well, actually, it's, it's capable of better welds than this. It's just that I'm not. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And of course, as always, thank you for watching.